In today's video, I'm going to give you 10 tips that you can apply today to improve your developer experience when building applications with Svelkit. Now, I got some of these tips from this Reddit post here, which I will leave a link to in the video description, but I thought that this would be useful to all of you out there. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right. So this first tip comes with the fact that all of our pages are now named plus page.svelte, right? So when we open one of these, let's just say we had a bunch of different pages open here. It's really hard for us to tell which page this actually is right now. If we have multiple ones open, VS code will, will take the path name here and append it uh, to this label. Uh, but we can actually make sure this is always showing, right? Because now we have these two page.svelte showing, but we don't know what page.server this is, right? So what we can do is we can go into our user settings and we can type in label format. And the first setting here, workbench editor label format, if we change this to short, you can see that now, no matter what, I'm gonna be able to see which page I'm actually working with. So even if I only have one page.svelte open, I can now see that this is this belongs to the login directory. Okay, and if I have another one open, we can see that that belongs to the register directory and so on and so forth. So that's the first tip. Let's move on to tip number two. All right, so tip number two, I actually don't use, and I, maybe it's because old habits die hard. I'm not too sure, but I could never really get behind this one. But if we open up our user settings, and, and again, this is stemming from the fact that we have, if you have a ton of nested uh, routes here, you can see it becomes a little bit tricky to tell which file belongs to what directory. You kind of have to walk the dog up this line here to figure out, okay, this belongs to this. I'm not too sure which one uh, these belong to. Uh, this is supposed to help with that. So if we go into our user settings and we go to sort order, uh, we scroll down to explore sort order and we change this to files first. You're going to see on the left here, this looks pretty foreign to me. And again, I, I couldn't get used to this. I tried it for three days because I did notice a benefit in the fact that I can see all the files first before the directories, uh, but it just felt a little bit weird to me. So now if we look at our directories, our source directories we here at the bottom, and it's gonna have the files first, meaning that any nested directories are gonna come after the files that belong to that direct directory. Uh, so if we look at our routes here, uh, let me actually collapse these. We can see that the layout.server.ts and the layout.svelte for this specific root route here uh, is before the layout group folders. So then the layout for this layout group comes before the routes that are within this layout group, right? Uh, so you can see this that, that the files come first. Now, again, I couldn't get behind this, but this may be something that you're interested in. So if it is, this is here for you if you'd like to turn this on. All right, for this third tip here, uh, this occurs if you want to have a route without actually anything in that route and then a sub route of that route. So in this case here, you can see that we have slash login, then we have activate slash join, and then our files here are inside of slash join. So this page.svelte is actually inside of slash join. Uh, however, it does this weird thing where it actually makes the folder compact if there's nothing in it. Uh, and that tends to confuse people from time to time. So to turn this off, we can open up our user settings and we want to go to compact folders and we want to uncheck this. And you'll see right away that now we actually can tell that activate is its own directory, right? And then within that activate directory, we have join. So that's just a quick little tip there. All right, so for tip number four it has to do with the material icon theme for VS Code. That's the theme that I use here. A lot of people ask me what icon theme I use. That is what it is. Uh, and you can see here that the routes directory in Svelkit is green. So in order to make all these subdirectories also green, so I know which when I'm in a route. Now, obviously, if you name something, a name that's going to trigger like jobs, for example, it's going to trigger its own folder uh, icon, then that, you know, obviously that'll override your colors, but I want all my routes to be green generally, right? That way I can tell that, Hey, these are part of my routes. Uh, we can do that. If we go to our settings and we go to, whoops, and we type in material icon theme, uh, we scroll down here, uh, we can see that we can change the color of the folder icons. So I just changed these to this green color here, 43A047. And then now all my folders are gonna be green, right? Rather than the default color. I'm not even sure what the default color is at this point, um, but this is what I prefer to do here. All right, so this next tip has to do with, again, being able to tell which route you're actually in. So if you notice from my previous tips, the indentions shifted in quite a bit um, because I set it back to the default setting, which is probably what yours looks like right now. Uh, but we can actually change this because look how close these are. And when you get down into these deeply nested routes, it's really hard to tell uh, which files belong to which directory. So what we can do, we can open up our user settings and we can do tree indent. And you can see that the workbench tree indent controls the tree indentation in pixels. So if we change this to 12, 
we can see now that there's a lot more indention happening. And if I change this to 16, I believe, um, you know, the further over, the, the more easy it's going to be for you to see. Uh, but it's going to take up more of that space on your Explorer. So for most videos that I'm making, I don't want this to take up so much space. So I usually keep it at about 12, uh, which is enough for me to be able to tell uh, which files belong to which directories. All right, so the next thing we're going to cover is extensions. I get asked a lot what extensions I'm using or how I'm doing something in a certain way. And these are the three extensions that I use that are related to SvelteKit and Svelte. Um, so let's see how we can actually use these and take full advantage of these. So let's go into our routes and let's just say we want to create a new route inside of employers. So all I have to do is right click on this, go to SvelteKit files here, click on create route, and I can do slash employer slash something. I hit enter and let's just say that I want a page.svelte and a page.server.ts. I click OK. You can see that now a route called something was created. We now have a page.svelte with some boilerplate already covered. And then we also have a load function set up here with the proper satisfies, types added, everything is good to go. So that's a really quick way that you can add routes. Another one is gonna be the snippet. So let's just say that inside of employers, I wanna create a new file. Let's just call this plus page.ts. All I have to do is type in kit, and you can see that a couple of these things start to pop out, right? So we have kit submit, which I actually created this myself. We'll cover that in just a second. But we have kit actions, kit endpoint, kit load, and kit param matcher. So in this case, let's just say we're gonna put a load function here. So we can hit enter on kit load, and now it gives us the option to choose a page load, page server load, or layout load, or layout server load, depending on what if you're using TypeScript or not. In this case, it would just be a page load, and then we can start to you know import whatever we wanted to import here yada, yada, yada. So that's a really quick way. And they have the same thing for actions too. And again, we're not on a page that can support actions, but we can still add them anyways. Uh, and you can see here that now we have actions, we can add our first action and so on and so forth, right? Now the kit submit snippet, I actually created myself and I'll show you guys that here in just a second. I'll leave, also leave a link in the description to uh, be able to copy it over, but it just makes adding the progressive enhancement or the submit functions to my page.svelts that much easier. You can see here that now I already have all the boilerplate that I typically would want inside of a submit function added here. Anything that I don't want, of course, I could remove. So that's a quick way to do this. Now this next tip has to do with being able to more easily navigate to different pages within your application. So this is kind of counterintuitive as to the other tips because those things help you, you know, navigate your files like this. And I'm also bad at this, uh, clicking around, wasting time, trying to find things like this. Um, and really there's a much easier way. So here we have a few different nested routes inside of resume, which is inside of candidates, which is inside of my. So in order to easily find routes, what we can do is we can hit control P or command P if you're on a Mac. And then if we type in plus, we can instantly see all the plus pages and plus servers and plus layouts uh, within our application. You can see here that I have quite a bit, right? Uh, but let's just say that I wanna find this create page here. So what I can do is I can type create and then plus and now we can see that we have all the pages inside of create first. So I have the plus page.svelte and the plus page.server uh, that belong to resumes create. So if I wanted to do education, I could do education plus, and now this are the two pages that are within education. That's just a quick way to switch between files without having to go over here and click through these different directories. I myself am trying to improve on this proficiency as well. All right, so for this last tip, it's gonna be using the Svelte Discord server. Uh, this thing is a gold mine of resources. Anytime I have a question, I mean, right now, obviously the Svelte community is still growing. So there's not as many resources out there as there are for other languages. Uh, but if you just use this, Discord search functionality is really good. So if I just want to type in something like loading data here in the Svelte Discord server, I'm going to see questions and answers related to loading data. So you can see here that getting a cookie, right? Getting URL parameters in a plus page.server. So people have a lot of the same questions that you probably have, and you can easily find the answers to these by searching for the right keywords inside of the Svelte Discord. I can't you know, say enough as to how much I've been able to learn from following this Discord and searching for things that I have questions about. There's a lot of really experienced individuals here that have been using Svelte since the beginning of its inception. Um, so definitely take advantage of this. All right, so that's gonna include this video on 10 tips for improving the developer experience working with SvelteKit and Svelte. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below or join the Discord server that I have linked below. Uh, and if you got value of this video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. It greatly helps the channel. And if nothing else, I will see you all in the next video.